welcome friends today we are going to discuss about dp dp what is called descriptive programming using uft so firstly we will discuss what our uft includes this dp feature in uft what's the meaning of that dp basically dp stands for what we call it it's called descriptive programming so it's a basically a smart way of automation using uft why it is called smart uh, uh, smart way we will discuss uh, in coming uh, points so basically th that's what a basic definition of what is dp dp is descriptive programming and the smartest way of automation and now comes where to use dp so what are the scenarios where the practical implementation of dp is used most frequently so first of all is objects in your application are dynamic dynamic in the sense like they are uh, changing at runtime suppose we have a gmail login we are like want to log out of that we want to click that logout button and that logout button is such that it specifies your name like ufthelp.com uh, log out from there but for other users it will be different so rather than capturing those objects into object repository we will uh, avoid that scenario we will go for dp and another thing can be like our objects are getting generated at the runtime suppose um, we want to click particular button on a pdf and that button is getting generated uh, at runtime and the properties cannot be captured so we will go for dp another thing is our object repository size is increasing increasing in the sense like we have lot of thing to automate and rather than having a uh, as mbs of size of uh, our object repository we will go for dp because larger the size of object repository uh, performance of uft is affected another thing is we don't want to use object repository the practical scenario is like we don't have our aut our application on a test ready so our dev team have just shared the properties of object they haven't implement that so rather than uh, having those object physically existing we will use their properties in dp and our code is ready another thing is our object repository is read only mode suppose in practical scenario how we work we work using shared object repository so in case we are working using shared object repository this means in case one person has opened that and he is having read and write access other person will have only read access so another person also want to update that it won't be possible so to avoid that scenario we will go for dp and the most important of all is like we are working with similar type of objects so in case we want to fill any application form it has 20 text boxes or to, um, three buttons which are coming on each page of that application form so rather than working adding those objects one by one to our object repository what we will do we will use dp so these were the just practical some of the scenarios we have re-implement dp so next is how to use dp so now we have covered what is basically a dp is and what are the scenarios we have to use dp and but how to use dp so two of the practical impl implementation of dp is called one is called static another is called dynamic so these are the two methods how we use dp what's the base of static dp in that we pass object information directly into our code so how we pass that information we pass in the combination of property name and property value pairs and those pairs are always separated by colon and equal just remember thing things that in static dp we are passing object property and their values using what the pairs and the pairs are separated by colon and equal to symbol for example we want to click our browser and browser is our object and what all the properties we are using we are using creation time and that's what my property name and we are giving the value as zero and we are separating that by colon and zero so that's how we implement static dp we are directly sending our information into the code another way is dynamic dp so in case we want to work with dynamic dp how to do that we will use what we will use description object and that object will return me collection of properties and using that object we will pass a property name and value pairs and in future we will use that object in our script so how to create an object of description we will create like using keyword set and the name of the object is equal to description dot create our description is basically a util object util object is the objects which are uh, exclusive to our uft or we can call it qtp so these are inbuilt util objects 
so object is created what next what we have to pass our property name and property value pairs as we did in static dp so here we are not separating anything by colon equal to we are directly specifying the value use dot value is equal to property value for example i want to click the same browser here what i'll do i'll pass object property name will be creation time dot value is equal to zero and I'll pass that object uh, as with the my object and it will be clicked. So just a repeat of the things or oh, what type of DP how we implement that we use, implement using static and dynamic and static we pass the property name and property value pairs but in our dynamic DP we create an object of description and we use that object into our code where we want to use that. So uh, that was how we implement that S some more uh, scenarios of DP which we are facing and regular basis while coding like we want to count google search result of a pay using dp uh, i've written already a uh, article on that the code is available on uftherp.com in case you want to refer just search my uh, website you will have the code for that or we want to take the object count on a page or extracting object properties in case i want to how many links are there on a page how many text boxes are there on a page or i want to check all the boxes in one go on my page so on my eot so all the things these are the practical implementation of dp so uh thing is what is the usage constraint of dp like limitation part so what's the limitation part one is thing when we are using dp in our uh, test object hierarchy we can't shift to our object repository part so for example i'm using um, window calculator calculator object is saved in my object repository and then i'm using win button of that and in that win button what i'm using i'm using property name and property value pairs like window id colon is equal to two so this means what I did, I used my object repository, then I shifted to my descriptive programming in between the flow of test object hierarchy. So this is possible. So what's my next scenario? What I did in next, I created a window object and I passed my property name and property value pairs. Then I used win button, but in here I am passing my object, which is already there in my object repository. So this scenario is not possible. So the idea is in case we are using, we started with our object repository, we can go to DP. But after DP, we have to follow our object repository properties in the form of DP itself. We can't move to our uh, object repository. So test object hierarchy should be like we can move from, we can move from object repository to DP, but from DP we can't move to object repository that was one of the limitation another thing is like in case my object name are in the form of regular expressions those will be treated as regular expressions rather than the uh, the name of that object so for example i have a window control i want to click dot symbol on my calculator so what i'll use i'll use a text property colon is equal to dot because the dot is a text property of that object i'll use a, another property name value pairs that is native class is equal to button because that is a class of that control so in case what when i use the click operation when i'm running the code it will generate an error because it will say i'm not able to uniquely identify the control on a, my aut calculator so how to avoid that scenario so this is what the culprit part the dot part because the name was dot it has taken as a regular expression to avoid that we will use backslash in that so the uses constraint first first was we can't move from dp to or another thing is everything is taken as regular expressions so le let me show you the demo part so i have already generated one demo code now what that demo code is having actually so we are working uh, our aut is a calculator so what i want my calculator i want my five to be clicked on calculator i have used three approaches over here my, what my first approach says is normal approach i have added my object to my object repository like normal way my objects are already there in my object repository i'm using that the name my calculator object is there my win button object is there i'm clicking that another method is my static dp how we implement static dp using property name and property value pairs so here my calculator object is already there but my win button is not there what i did i used property name and property value pairs to click my object 
another one is dynamic approach what i am using in dynamic approach i am using my description dot create object and object is created and i am then passing property name and property value pairs using value method so then i am using that object to click on that so let me run the code so this is my aut i am running the code and i am clicking five by using three approaches one is object passing another is static another is dynamic so let me run in debug mode so we can see how the operations are getting generated so i'm pressing f11 five got pressed by normal mode another is static dp so it has pressed that five itself using static another is dynamic approach so i'm using dynamic approach to click that so see it has clicked five again so our five got clicked three times so let me uh, see what was the difference uh, when we click that we when we go to result viewer we can clearly see that whether we implemented dp or not so this was my normal behavior my object dot clicked in case i am using dp whether we are using static or we are using dynamic dp the square brackets will be there around that object though this means we have used dp itself so this was like in case we want different property name name value pairs because our object is not getting recognized by one property name value pairs we can use that so how to separate that separate the things by using comma and double quotes we are using the property name and property value pair here i am using class native class colon is equal to button so i have used one more uh, property name value pair because sometimes it happens that object is not getting recognized by one property name value pairs we will use two or three property name value pairs how to separate you separate you the uh, properties using comma and in similar in dp how to implement that in dp what i'll use i'll uh, type the same thing here also class is equal to dot value what was the value is value is button so similar thing i am applying here okay sorry uh so this is my aut let me cancel the thing uh okay so let me run the code in debug mode f11 so let's see how the things are working this time this is my normal mode five got clicked so this is what my static dp five got clicked we use two property name value pairs similarly in our dynamic dp also we used to property name value pairs so in case we are not sure or where to uh, get these property name value pairs so it's very easy objects by the object which you want uh, uh, to be added using dp suppose in case i want five to be added so what i'll use i'll use this feature of objects by copy to clipboard so i'm clicking on that i'm closing my objects by so you can open any editor notepad notepad plus plus i'm using this to illustrate i'm using the uh, idea of editor itself i'm pasting the things so this is what it has given me property name and property value pairs so all those are getting separated by colon is equal to symbol so from here we have to pick up the property name and value pairs which will be uniquely used to identify our controls what we used in our um, identification we used window id so where is that window id so this is what so similarly we copied from here and we used it here itself so in case i want two property name value pairs i can use more so i used what native class colon is equal to button so similarly i used in dynamic dp so nothing to worry about in case you don't know what is the property name value pairs just objects by that control copy to clipboard and paste in any editor and we can pick our things from the combination which is generated by uft itself so thus that's that's all from a dp set just a brief summary of the things uh let me go back to that so that was users constraint okay summary of dp what is de uh, descriptive programming it's the smartest way of doing automation without referring our object repository we don't want to use our object repository can thing can be like our object repository is not ready uh, our because of our aut is not ready or object repository size increasing the things are coming in read only mode or object properties are dynamic or similar type of objects are there we don't want our over to used two methods of implementation is static and dynamic static we implement using property name value pairs and dynamic we have to create an object of description dot create and everything is taken as property name and value pairs how to get this property name and value pairs using objects by and copy to clipboard oh sorry power is going on test of hierarchy uh, we can't move from uh, we can move from or to dp what we can't move from dp to or and everything is property name as taken as regular expressions that's all so uh in case you want any more help just refer uftherb.com thanks a lot for watching this video